Hi guys! In this video we're going to be looking at potential dividers, the potential divider equation, and we're going to finish with a summary. So we're going to start off by looking at potential dividers. And what potential dividers are is it's essentially a way of setting up a circuit so that the EMF from a power supply can be split between different components. So now let's have a look at this in more detail. Power supplies, such as batteries, have a fixed EMF. So we have a battery here, which is quite often the power supply for a circuit, and this battery has a fixed EMF that we can't change. Sometimes devices need to vary their potential difference when connected to a source with a fixed EMF. So for example, going back to our battery, components are connected to our battery. But this is a fixed EMF source, so we can't actually control the EMF of the battery. So if we want a different EMF than the one supplied by the battery, we have a problem. An example of such a device is a speaker. So here we have a speaker and a speaker is connected to a power supply in order for it to play music or to play a sound. However, in order to vary the volume of a speaker, we need to vary its potential difference. So quite often when we use a speaker, we don't want it to be at a fixed volume. We want to have the flexibility to change the volume. And we actually need to vary the potential difference of the speaker in order to vary the volume. And then in order to vary the potential difference, we need to vary the EMF. But the EMF of a battery is fixed, and it's quite inconvenient to have to keep changing the battery for different EMFs in order to vary the potential difference and to vary the volume. So since speakers often contain batteries with fixed EMFs, we must add an additional feature to the speaker's circuit to vary the potential difference. So rather than having to change the battery that's supplying the fixed EMF, we add an additional feature in order to vary the potential difference, because otherwise the speaker has a fixed potential difference. A potential divider circuit is able to divide the EMF such that the potential difference supplied to the device is different to the EMF of the power supply. So the power supply here, our battery, has a fixed EMF. And what a potential divider circuit does is it divides the potential difference. So this is a typical potential divider circuit setup. So the potential divider circuit divides the EMF across these two components. So we have V1 here and V2 here. So this is convenient then because it means the potential difference across one of the devices isn't equal to the fixed EMF. It means we can have other values. And in this case, the EMF is equal to V1 plus V2. And we know this from Kirchhoff's second law. So we've said that in a closed loop, the sum of the EMFs, which in this case is just the EMF of that battery, is equal to the sum of the potential differences across the components in that closed loop which in this case is just V1 plus V2. A potential divider circuit contains two or more resistors in series with a source of fixed EMF. So here's our battery, which is our source of fixed EMF. And then we've got two resistors in series. And because these resistors are connected in series, we're able to split the EMF across the two resistors. And again, we get this from Kirchhoff's second law. The EMF of the power supply is denoted as V in. So in this case, the EMF of the battery here is denoted as V in. So that's the potential difference in or the voltage in. And we've said that as the resistors are connected in series, following Kirchhoff's second law, the EMF of the source is split between them. So the EMF of the source we've said is V in, and then we get a potential difference across each resistor. So we have V1 and V2. And we've said that Kirchhoff's second law tells us that the sum of the EMFs in a closed loop is equal to the sum of the potential differences across components in that closed loop. So the sum of the EMFs in this case is just V in. 
So our EMF source is the battery, and we've said the fixed EMF of our source is denoted as V in. So that's what the sum of the EMFs is here. And then the sum of the potential differences is just the sum of the potential differences across the two resistors. So that's just V1 plus V2. The resistors can have a potential difference of any value from zero up to the maximum supplied from the power source, so long as they add to V in. So we said V in is our fixed EMF, and the values that V1 and V2 can take can be anything between zero and V in. However, the one condition we need to satisfy is that V in is equal to V1 plus V2. So for example, if V1 was equal to V in, that would mean that V2 would have to be zero and vice versa. So the sum of the two must be equal to V in, and then other than that, V1 and V2 can take any value between zero and V in. And the reason this is the case is from Kirchhoff's second law. So V in must always be equal to V1 plus V2, and we get that from Kirchhoff's second law. For example, two resistors connected in series to a 12 volt supply can give us a potential divider circuit. So if our supply is 12 volts, that means V in is equal to 12 volts. And then we've got two resistors, so they probably have resistances R1, R2. And in this case, V1 and V2 can each take any value from 0 to 12, as long as they add up to 12. So for example, V1 might be equal to 4 volts, and V2 might be equal to 8 volts. And then when we find V in by doing V1 plus V2, we've just got 4 plus 8, which is 12 volts. So that works. So we can see why this is a potential divider circuit. The fixed EMF is 12 volts. However, when we look at the potential difference across our components, we can see that it's been split. So we have a different value to the fixed EMF that goes into the circuit. A circuit can then be connected across one of the resistors in parallel. So again, we've got V in here, which we said was 12 volts. And then we've got R1 and R2. And we said the potential difference across R1 was 4 volts. And the potential difference across R2 was 8 volts. So now we can connect a circuit across one of the resistors in parallel. So that's what we've got here. So here we've got V in, 12 volts. We're just not showing that on our diagram. Then this is R2, which we said has a potential difference of 8 volts. And then R1 with a potential difference of 4 volts. And then this value here is V out. So what we mean by V out is the value of the potential difference that we get by splitting up the EMF, and that's from using two resistors. So V out, for example, is our desired potential difference. So for example, the potential difference we want for a speaker in order to ensure we have the correct volume. The potential difference across that circuit, which is V out, is given by the potential difference across the resistor it is connected in parallel with. So V in we said was 12 volts, and then we said we've got R2, R1, and we've got 8 volts, 4 volts. So in this case, V out, so that's the potential difference that's supplied to the circuit, is given by the potential difference across R1 here. So that's just equal to 4 volts. By using resistors of different fixed resistance, we can vary the potential difference across the connected circuit from zero to the maximum value of the power supply. So V in, we've said, is the value of our power supply. And then we've got two resistors, R2, R1. And we've said previously that if we have V2 here and V1 here, V1 and V2 can take any value from zero to V in, provided that they add up to V in. And in this case, we've said that V out is equal to V1. And if V1 is between zero and V in, that must mean V out can also take any value from zero to V in. So this is essentially how a potential divider works. By using two resistors in series, we're able to split the EMF provided by the source into two different potential differences in order to get a particular potential difference we want for a circuit. So now that we understand what a potential divider is and also how it works, we're going to look at how we can derive the potential divider equation. 
For a power supply with a fixed V in, we can determine the resistances required to produce a desired V out in a potential divider circuit. So the EMF provided by our power supply is our V in. That's the potential difference coming into the circuit. And we've seen that in a potential divider setup, we connect two resistors in series. So we've got R1 and R2 here. And if we connect a circuit across one of the two resistors, in this case R2, we get a potential difference across that circuit equal to the potential difference across that resistor. So in this case, the potential difference across R2 is V out, and that's the potential difference supplied to that circuit. So in order to get a particular value for V out that we want, we need to select certain values for R1 and R2. So the resistances of the resistors affect potential difference across our connected circuit. We know that the total resistance of resistors connected in series is given by the sum of their individual resistances. So the total resistance R of a series circuit with lots of resistors connected in series is just the sum of their resistances. So we've got R1 plus R2 plus R3 and so on, depending on how many resistors we have. For a potential divider circuit containing two resistors of fixed resistance, we can write the total resistance of the combination. So going back to our potential divider circuit, we've got two resistors connected in series. We've got R2 and R1. So to get the total resistance of this circuit, R, we just sum them together. So we've got R1 plus R2. We also know from Kirchhoff's second law that the potential difference across the power supply is equal to the potential difference across the resistors. So V in is the EMF of our power supply. And we know from Kirchhoff's second law that the sum of the EMFs in a closed loop is equal to the sum of the potential differences across the components in that loop. So in this case, the sum of the potential differences of our component is the potential difference across the two resistors. So that's why V in is equal to the potential difference across the resistors. From the equation relating current, potential difference and resistance, we can write an expression for the current through the circuit. So we know that the total current going through this series circuit is given by the total potential difference of the circuit, so that's the potential difference across the resistors, divided by the total resistance, so that's the combined resistance of the two resistors. So we can actually write this in terms of our symbols. So we know that the potential difference across the resistors is equal to V in from Kirchhoff's second law, and we've already found an expression for the total resistance of the circuit. So we found that that was R1 plus R2. We can multiply both sides of this equation by the resistance of the resistor the output is connected to get the potential difference across the first resistor. So remember, potential difference is R times I. So to get the potential difference across our first resistor, we just do R1, its resistance, multiplied by the current going through it, which is I. So this is just going to be equal to R1 multiplied by the expression we just found for current. So we found that that was V in divided by R1 plus R2. So we now have an expression for V1 because R1 times I is just V1, the potential difference across that resistor. So V1 is equal to R1 divided by R1 plus R2 multiplied by V in. And we can also do the same for the potential difference across the second resistor. So now we're going to do R2 multiplied by the current. So this is going to be equal to R2 multiplied by our expression for the current, which we found was V in divided by R1 plus R2. So R2 times I gives us V2, the potential difference across the second resistor. So now we've got an expression for that potential difference. We have R2 divided by R1 plus R2 multiplied by V in. We see that the potential difference across each resistor in a potential divider circuit is given by its fraction of the total resistance multiplied by the potential difference of the power supply. So looking at our expression for V2, 
we can see we've got V2 multiplied by R2 divided by R1 plus R2 and then multiplied by V in. So V2 is the potential difference across the second resistor and then R2 over R1 plus R2 is the fraction of the total resistance for R2. So we've got R2, the resistance of the second resistor, divided by the total resistance in the circuit. So we can see why we've got that fraction. So then to get V2, we just do that fraction multiplied by the potential difference of the power supply. So that's how we can break down this expression. We know that when a circuit is connected across one of the resistors, the total potential difference in the circuit is equal to the potential difference across that resistor. So we've said the EMF provided by the power supply is V in, and we've got two resistors in series R1 and R2, and they each have a potential difference across them, so we've got V1 and V2. So if we were to connect a circuit across R2 in order to get a certain potential difference for that circuit, whatever the potential difference across R2 is will be equal to the potential difference across that circuit. So that's what V out is. V out is equal to V2. So this then gives us the potential divider equation, because remember we had an equation for V2, but we've just established that V2 is equal to V out. So that allows us to write V out is equal to R2 divided by R1 plus R2 multiplied by V in. So we can see how we've been able to derive this equation. So V out is the potential difference across the connected circuit. Then R2 in this expression is the resistance of the resistor connected to that circuit. R1 is then the resistance of the other resistor and V in is just the potential difference across the power supply. So now let's see how we can apply this equation to an example. A 25 volt battery is connected to a 450 ohm resistor and a 225 ohm resistor as part of a potential divider circuit. The output is connected across the 225 ohm resistor. Calculate V out. So we've been told a 25 volt battery is connected to these two resistors. So that means V in, which is the EMF provided by the battery, is equal to 25 volts. And we've then been told we've got a V out value, which is across the 225 ohm resistor. So that means this resistance here is 225 ohms, and then this other resistance is 450 ohms. So remember, R2 is the resistance of the resistor connected to the circuit. So that means here R2 is 225, and 450 ohms is equal to R1. So now our first step is to write the potential divider equation. So we've said that V out, so the potential difference supplied the connected circuit, is equal to R2 divided by R1 plus R2 multiplied by V in. So we know what our values for R1, R2 and V in are, so our second step is to just substitute values into the equation to calculate V out. So V out is equal to R2 over R1 plus R2. We said R2 was the resistance of the resistor connected to the circuit, which is 225 ohms, and then that's divided by the total resistance, which is 450 ohms plus 225 ohms. And we then do that multiplied by V in, which is just 25 volts. So if we type this into our calculator, we get that V out is equal to 8.3 recurring volts. So to two significant figures, this is 8.3 volts. So that's the potential difference we end up having across our circuit. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revised smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.